A huge shout out to the art and craft of problem solving from Paul Zietz, which showed me this really cool trick. All right, let's get the video started. Combinatorial arguments. Sometimes we don't need to bash out formulas with algebra to find out if they're true, but rather take them in a new flexible perspective through combinatorics and find a more elegant solution. Starting off, let's just go through some examples. Like, uh, what is one way that you can express seven times six in a combinatorial argument? Pause and then try these out. One example could be that you have seven pants and you have six shirts. So what's the number of outfits you could wear? So combinations of pants and shirts. That would be seven times six. How about a combinatorial argument for 12 plus six plus five? In order to have addition of numbers, they have to be mutually ex exclusive cases. So for example, you might have a selection of 12 shorts, six pants, and five dress pants, but you can't wear all of them at the same time. Otherwise you'll be considered a weirdo. So you can only choose one of them. So now the question is, what's the total different types of pants you can wear? 12 plus six plus five. Uh, seven to the fifth, you have seven pants to choose from over five days. And seven to the fifth will determine the total number of permutations. If I chose 10, choose four, and this is the same thing as saying you're, you're choosing a, a football team of four without assigning roles out of 10 without roles. So like these are just random people and each of them have the same role. And so then that's 10, 10 choose four. What about the permutation of 10 and four? So you're choosing four players out of a 10 team, but they each have a separate role. Maybe a, a captain, a center, a goalie, and a striker. If I had five times 13 choose five, in this case, because of this 13 choose five, you're still choosing five out of 13 people, but assign one of them the role of a captain. How about this example? 17 choose eight times 10 choose two. Well, this could be interpreted as, as picking a team of eight girls with two boys, and there are a total of 17 girls and 10 boys to choose from. What if I had 17 choose three plus 17 choose four? It could be the number of teams out of 17, uh, which are three or four people. What's a combinatorial argument for the statement that 17 choose 10 is equal to 17 choose seven? If 10 winners are assigned out of 17, that's the same thing as assigning seven losers out of the 17. And we can generalize the last statement pretty easily into a statement such as n choose r is equal to n choose n minus r, which is r winners out of 17, which is the same thing as assigning n minus r losers. Uh, let's move on to a more difficult combinatorial argument kind of problem, which is proving Pascal's identity n choose r plus n choose r plus one is equal to n plus one choose r plus one. This n plus one choose r plus one is like you pick a group of r plus one from n plus one. You can portray this something like this. You have n and then plus one. And then the second statement here is stating that you choose r plus one of n. So this right statement here is able to fulfill all of the r plus one groups you could have in this first n interval, but we're missing the possibilities which we have the extra plus one person in an r plus one group which is where this last one comes here. This last one is finding an R plus one group already with the nth plus one person. That leaves R people remaining out of the R plus one group, which you can choose from the n people. And there we have it. We have all groups that you can choose R plus one people out of n plus one. What if I wanted to prove this statement here uh, and look at each individual term in the left side. The left side looks something like our times n choose r in general form. What could this represent in a combinatorial argument? Well, it's been discussed before that r times n choose r is like you choose r people out of n and then you assign a leader. Uh, we could have group sizes from one all the way to n and each one has to have a leader. So let's do it the other way. Instead of first assigning a group size and then a leader, let's assign a leader first and then a group size. Choose one leader out of the n people. So the leader could be n. And then the group size could be any subset of the remaining n minus one people. Because we chose a leader, then there's remaining n minus one people uh, that you can choose any subset of to become part of the group. This would turn into two to the n minus one. In the end, giving you n times two to the n minus one. Can we find a nice formula for this using a combinatorial argument? It's a little hard to see how to do this, but why don't we try to expand the expression a little bit? What if we apply the kind of reflective formula for these, uh, for these combinations on only one of the terms for each pair? 
Okay, notice how for each pair that the sums of the peoples that you're choosing, right, n choose zero, n choose n, always sums to n. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like you're picking a group of n from to a total 2n people. So is this equal to 2n choose n? We can think about it like this. We have a group of n and n people, and then we can choose zero people from here and n people from here in the first term. In the second term, we can choose one person from the first group and n minus one people from the second group, and so on until we finally get our last combination. And so this left side should give us all the possible groups of n people from a total of n plus n people. So we conclude that indeed this sum here is equal to 2n choose n. Let's finish it up with Amy number seven on the 2020 Amy one. The problem goes something like this. We have 11 men and 12 women, and we wanna form a committee of however many people such that there is always one more woman than the number of men in the committee. And then we wanna we want to find the number of committees that form. So let's say there are zero men. If there's zero men, then there's exactly one woman. So 11 choose zero for the men and 12 choose one for the woman. If there's one man, so 11 choose one, then there must be two women, 12 choose two, and this goes on. Right. This goes on all the way up till there's, you could choose 11 men and 11 women. Maybe we want to find what this is equal to. Now we could do this algebraically, or we could do this using a combinatorial argument. The way that we're phrasing it doesn't really help us. So we need to take on a different perspective. Let's apply the reflected property. So if we reflect each of the woman combinations, what happens? Wait a second, something just happened. If you look at the choosings from each uh, men and woman group, well, we have 11 and zero here, and we have one and 10 here. What, they both sum to 11. This could possibly be viewed as choosing a group of 11 from 23 total people. So this is the number of groups of 11 from 23. Because we go through all the combinations, we could have zero men and 11 women, we could have one man and 10 women, and, and so on. So indeed, this does give us the number of groups of 11 from 23 total people. Our answer is thus 23 choose 11. All right, Coolio. So combinatorial argument, super powerful to generate elegant solutions for combinatorial problems. All right, thanks for watching.